this is a serious teaching on mental capacity last last session i talked about the part one of it which was about the questions that disciples asked jesus and they're the same similar the same questions that we ask ourselves today and i call them critical questions of destiny critical questions of destiny and within this series of teaching i want to talk today about mental capacity a uh, mental capacity part two which is uh conditions mental conditions mental conditions we're going to cover quite a number of them and we're going to look at different mental conditions different mental conditions the first mental condition we're going to look at is a confused mind a confused mind we'll also look at an anxious mind then we'll look at uh, a restless mind uh, then we'll look at an insane mind and a troubled mind a troubled mind a blighted mind and finally a sober mind these are seven different mental conditions that we find ourselves in either at one point in time or uh, sometimes a number of them at a particular time and during this season especially during this season where we have a uh, global lockdown people are locked in the house working from home businesses are closing uh, we have job losses at a very high rate uh, people will find themselves uh, you know asking themselves questions that are questions of direction questions of destiny questions of purpose and they may find themselves in confusion and today i want us to i want to deal with confusion i want to deal with confusion because it's a mental condition it's a mental condition you may be confused uh, you know because of a decision that you, you need to make maybe your your fiance is leaving you or you're confused on which fiance to choose uh which man to choose to marry you or you're confused because of the kind of job you want to do the kind of business you want to do the kind of uh you know career you're going to undertake or confused because uh things are not working in life these are mental conditions that we're going to look at and so uh, let's begin with the first one Let's begin with the first one which is the confused mind the confused mind are you in a state of confusion are you state in a state where you feel you need direction you need to understand who you are you need to know what next possibly you're in this state let's see what it means and how to come out of it the bible says in the book of deuteronomy 28 20 and i'm giving an example of confusion here the Bible says the Lord will send you uh, on your curses, confusion and rebuke in every uh, everything you put your hand to until you are destroyed and come to sudden ruin because of the evil you have done in forsaking him. You know, the children of, he, of Israel find themselves in the state of, in a state of confusion for, for, quite, for quite some time and several times in, in the Bible you look at the first time they were in the wilderness they went around the same place a journey that would have taken them 40 days it took them 40 years a journey that would have taken them 40 days it took them 40 years i would describe this as a state of confusion it it it, it must have been a state of confusion you're confused you cannot see a simple direction you cannot see the way out and 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 this was a god caused confusion it was a god caused confusion when people disobey god when people uh fail to listen to god's will and word or direction from god they find themselves in a state of confusion uh the world today is in a state of confusion and maybe if they if they listened to the word of god if they listened to the men of god giving direction and especially men of God that are hearing from God, possibly they would not uh, will not be in the state we are in today. Every time Israel consulted the will of God, every time Israel or any man of God, any king consulted a, a prophet, there was direction, and that word of God cleared confusion. 
uh, and it's very important look at the time when when Saul was looking for the donkeys of his father for three four day for three days they were confused they couldn't find the donkeys on the fourth day they they decide to go and look for a prophet and when they got uh, to go, they got to where Samuel was uh, the bible says Samuel told them exactly what they wanted to hear or what they needed to hear the donkeys have been found the donkeys have been have been found and the, he, he told them the journey that you had took was not only for the donkeys but now you are being you're going to be anointed as king over Israel. Those are the words that uh, uh, Samuel told us uh, so. And, and so when we hear from God, when we have that voice of clarity from God, it, it clears doubt, it clears confusion. And so we need to come to a state and as, as a people, as people who fear God, as born again believers, we need to embrace the will of God, to embrace the hearing of the word of God, the direction that come from a uh, man of God so that we clear confusion. But let's look at uh, further discussion on this topic of uh, confused mind. Uh, there are several uh, terminology, there are several terminologies that talk about, that, that refer to sh uh, confusion in the, in the Hebrew translation. And, and, and I, I'm going to look at them. I'm going to look at one of uh, one by one. We're going to look at comparison of that same word what does it mean in in english or what are the other translations in english for example the word bosheth is the same word that uh, tra is translated as confusion as shame and as paleness bosheth is translated as shame paleness and even confusion and even confusion let me show you in the scriptures and uh, this is in the book of first samuel chapter 20 and verse number 30 1 Samuel 20 and verse number 30. In the New King James Version, the Bible says, Then Saul's, Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan, and he said unto him, Thou son of the perverse generation, a rebellious woman, sorry, do not I know that thou hast chosen the son of Jesse to thine own confusion, and unto the confusion of thy mother's nakedness. Now, that is an example where the word confusion is used in the bible let's look at uh, the same scripture in the new living translation the same scripture in the new living translation the bible says so boiled with rage and at jonathan you stupid son of a whore he sought at he saw at him do you think i don't know that you want him to be king in your in your place shaming yourself and your mother look at that uh, the same word at the first uh, scripture which is in king james version uh which which says confusion is used here as shaming in the hebrew translation that word here is bosheth that word here is bosheth and so i want to show you how the same word confusion could act could actually mean shame or even paleness could even could actually mean shame Let's look at the same word in the book of First Semi, uh, in the book of Psalms, chapter one hundred nine, verse twenty nine. Psalms one hundred nine, chapter twenty, uh, verse twenty nine. The Bible says, "Let mine adversaries be clothed with shame, and let them cover themselves with their own confusion, as with a mantle, as with a mantle." The same scripture in NIV would say, would read, "May my accusers." be clothed with disgrace and wrapped in shame as in a clock look at that same word up here as confusion is now used as a clock uh, sorry uh, as, as 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 shame so the same word bosheth which means confusion also means shame also means shame a confused mind is a mind of shame a confused mind is a mind of shame and then we also talk about paleness from the same word uh, bosheth paleness means deficiency of color especially of the face and so if bosheth means paleness which also means shame which also means uh, confusion then if you are in a state of confusion we could say your mind is in a state of shame your mind is in a state of shame and isn't it true that when people are confused in fact they feel ashamed 
they feel ashamed of them of themselves they feel ashamed even talking before people because they are in a state of confusion they also have paleness mental paleness mental paleness would mean they have you know they lack quality and content they lack quality and content i give an example you're in a meeting or you're in a you know in a boardroom uh, a board meeting where you have your seniors uh, and you're presenting or you're discussing a topic for example a strategic meeting and you do not have understanding of the topic what happens is because you have you do not have content to uh, to, to to contribute to the, towards the discussion you find yourself actually blank and by any chance if they asked you a question about that topic you'd um, almost run out or if run out of the uh, out of the boardroom or uh, bow your hand down uh, you know bury your head in the sand because you well, if you are blank you are also confused in fact that is the exact thing that happens with life when you are confused it is a state of blank a uh, being blank in mind uh, having paleness of mind having no content you have no idea what to do next and, and i'm maybe communicating to people that are in a state where you are confused your business is over uh all the money you had in savings possibly you have put into hospital bill or you've put into another business and it just collapsed the point is don't allow yourself to get into a point where you're blank don't allow yourself to get into a point where you're confused a state of confusion is is, is a state that leads people to shame is a state that leads people to shame and the first shame not not only people are shaming you but are shaming yourself before people and i do pray today that even as you learn uh, about confusion you're not going to end uh, to, to end into con into into shame god is going to help you to come out the other word that means uh, confu uh refers to confusion in hebrew is the word kalima kalima is the same word that refers uh, that means disgrace is the same word that means disgrace let's get evidence from the scripture the book of Psalm, Psalms 44 and verse number 15, the Bible says, My confusion is continually before me, and the shame of my face has covered me. My confusion is continually before me, and the shame of my face has covered me. Let's look at the same scripture in another translation. NIV says, I live in disgrace. The first one was my confusion is continually before me and now he, say, he says i live in disgrace all day long and and my face is covered with shame so now uh, by just opposing the two scriptures i want to show you that the same word that is used as confusion is the same word used as disgrace so when you are in a state of confusion just like a state of uh, confusion which, which leads to shame the same state would lead to disgrace would lead to disgrace let's also look at isaiah 30 and verse number three the bible says therefore shall the strength of pharaoh be your shame and the and the trust in the shadow of egypt your confusion and look at the same scripture in niv it says but pharaoh's protection will be to your shame Egypt's shade will bring your dis your disgrace. So the same word used as, uh, as as confusion is the same word used as disgrace. Is the same word used as disgrace. Let's look at another word that uh, that uh, means confusion. Is the word tohu, tohu. We are looking at Hebrew words that mean confusion or that refer to confusion. The word tohu also uh, means ruin. Also means ruin. In Isaiah chapter 24, verse number 10, the Bible says, the city of confusion is, is broken down. Even every house is shut up that no man may come in. The city of confusion is broken down. Let's look at the same scripture in NIV. It says, the ruined city lies desolate. The entrance to every house is bad. Now the word ruin, the word ruin here, is the same word for desolate a confused mind is a mind in ruin 
is a mind in ruin. It is a destructed or dis disintegrated mind. It, it is a dis destructed or a dis disintegrated mind. When you are in ruin, you are in shutters. You are you you are, you are, you are, dis you are in desolate. It is also defined as a state of decay. When you are in this state, when you are in a state of confusion, which is the same word for ruin, it means you are in a state of decay. Your mind is in a state of decay. It's, it's not being re reborn. It's not being renewed. And when you stop being renewed, you start decaying. You start decaying. You start you know, going backward in life. You, you start thinking negative, uh, negatively. The word tohu also means chaos. The word tohu also means chaos. When we say the word confusion, tohu, chaos, it means the same thing. Now, the Bible in the book of uh, Isaiah, that 4, verse number 11, B of it says, And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. And the, stone, the stones of emptiness. Now, watch this. NIV says, God will stretch out over a dome the measuring line of chaos and the plump line of desolation. So the same word used as uh, as confusion is actually the uh, is actually chaos in NIV. So a, a confused mind is a chaotic mind. A confused mind is a chaotic mind. It's a mind with too much noise uh, that you cannot make. A good decision. You cannot make a good decision. And, and 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 I pray to God that He will clear every confusion in our minds. He will take away every every confusion because when you are confused, uh, when you allow too much noise in your head, you get confused. You you get into a state you cannot make a decision. And and so many people are stuck there. They're stuck there. Too much noise. There's chaos on media. Chaos in our news lines, our newspapers, our social media platforms everywhere there's chaos chaos in terms of noise chaos in terms of the the things that we are hearing every day and if we are going to overcome this if we are if we are going to build faith in our hearts in our minds we have to allow some of these things to pass and not settle them in our, in our minds a confused mind is full of chaos and lacks order and calmness. If there is one thing that we need to learn as as, as a children children of God is calmness, calmness. The the book of Hebrew chapter four and encourages us to enter rest. In fact, it says uh, 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 be diligent to enter the rest. Why? Because entering rest is where God is calling us to be, not in a state of confusion, not in a state of uh, of chaos and disorder. Now, listening to many voices, news, friends, haters, naysayers, it leads to a chaotic mind. It leads to a chaotic mind. There's a time to cool down, you know, settle, relax, and find peace within yourself. Allow naysayers to say to talk, but don't put it in. Don't settle it in your heart. A child of God requires calmness of spirit. You require calmness of spirit. And in this season, for you to overcome, for you to come out without depression, for you to come out of it without stress, for you to come out, out of it without you know, stomach ulcers, you need calmness of spirit, calmness of mind. Find peace in God. Find peace in God. Tohu also means emptiness. Tohu also means emptiness. The same word uh, used as confusion, uh, tohu confusion, also means emptiness. Let's look at the scripture in Isaiah chapter 41, verse number 29. The Bible says, Behold, they are all vanity. Their works are nothing. Their molten images are wind and confusion. Same scripture. Uh, that scripture uh, compares the word confusion and 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 emptiness it says behold they are all vanity their works are nothing their molten images are wind and confusion now a confused mind is an empty mind a confused mind is an empty mind a confused mind is an empty mind how does it become empty it is blown away by wind 
its content is blown out like by wind. When you have confusion in your mind, even what to know, even what to sh what the, the content you have that can help you, the someone you are preached to, the teaching you are given, the education you have from school, confusion takes it away and leaves you empty. And that's why we should not allow confusion in our lives at a time as this. Find a word, find a rema word that will take you to the next level. Do not allow confusion, do not allow noise, do not allow chaos to overtake or to overrule the word of God in your heart. Bible, uh, David said, I have hidden his word in my heart and I want to challenge you. Hide the word of God in your heart. When you do that, you will not allow confusion because the word of God will take away confusion. And we shall look at that. Confusion as a way of emptying someone's mind to a shell. Confusion as a way of emptying someone's mind. Now, this the word confusion in Greek, the word confusion in Greek is a is a tough word to pronounce, all right? Uh, it's, it, it's, a, it's a word akatashatasia, akatashatasia, which means instability or disorder, which means instability or disorder. Now, the book of 1 Corinthians 14.33, 1 Corinthians 14.33, it says, for God is not the order of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Remember, I'm using an, either New King James Version for the first one. Then it says in NIV, for God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. So now the, the same word which is used here as confusion is the same word for disorder. When you are in a state of confusion, it simply says you are in a state of mental disorder, mental disorder. You see, the medical, the medical practitioners will use the same mental disorder to refer to a very, uh, you know, a, 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 a scary state, a scary state, like maybe insane or, uh, you know, sickness. Indeed, confusion is a state of sickness, but you may not realize that you're in a sickly state because when you are in confusion, you have a mental disorder. That state is actually to mean you do not have order in your thinking. There is no order in your thinking. And when you lack order in your thinking, even, even your decision making, your next steps in life, you cannot organize your goals. You cannot organize your steps. You cannot organize your journey of life. And so I pray that you come out of that state of disorder and put your life in order because that is where, you know, excellence comes from. You cannot experience excellence in life if you are in a state of disorder. James 3.16, the Bible says, For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and evil work. Same scripture in NIV says, uh, for where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. So the same, when you are in a, in a state of confusion, you are in a state of disorder. A a victory over it. Now, let's look at an orderly mind. Now that you have said confusion also means disorder, what is an orderly mind? mind what is an orderly mind the opposite of disorder or uh, orderly sorry the opposite of orderly is chaotic disorderly disorganized or messy you don't want your mind to be like that you don't you, want, you don't want your life to be like that because if your mind is in in chaos if your mind is disorderly if your mind is disorganized if your mind is messy it will definitely manifest in the outward. It will definitely manifest in the outward. The reason why some people cannot put their offices in order, they cannot arrange the, you know, their desks, they cannot have a, a clean desk policy, they cannot put their houses in order, their sitting rooms are messy, you know, their bedrooms are messy, their clothes, you put on clothes that are not ironed, you know, you cannot comb your hair and clean, uh, neat, is because deep in your mind, it's a manifestation of the state of your mind. It's the manifestation of the state of your mind. If your mind is orderly, if your mind is organized, if your mind is not messy, 
we will see it outwardly. We'll see it outwardly. And I want to challenge you, don't allow confusion in your mind. This is a state most people find themselves in. Confusion makes it impossible to make clear decisions in life. Bringing order into your mind will free you from confusion, will free you from confusion. An orderly mind is an organized life. An orderly mind is an organized life. Now, what are the symptoms of a confused mind? What are the symptoms of a confused mind? Or how do you know you are confused? How do you know you are confused? I'm just using simple, uh, you know, softer words. Uh, the, the, the direct word is how do you know that you are in confusion or you are confused? You feel overwhelmed even with little work. When you are in a state of confusion, many times you feel overwhelmed. Even when, even after doing a little uh, some little work, uh, after reading one chapter of the of a book, you feel overwhelmed. You cannot continue. Your body drains up. Uh, number two is you take long to achieve little things. You take long to achieve very little. You're given a task. Something that would have taken you a day, it takes you three days because your mind is not uh, in order. Your mind is not uh, in a comfort. Your mind is not uh, in a state that, it can, it, that can, it can deliver. Confusion will make you achieve very little after a very long time. When you have order in your mind, it's easy to execute. It's easy to do some tasks in a very uh, you know, quick manner or simple manner. You also feel a sense of loss. Of control when you are confused you feel a sense of loss of control you don't feel like you're in control not even of your over your life you feel like you're, you're losing your life you're losing it in life you feel like you 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 you, you your life will not make you not make it in life sorry you feel like you want to die you feel like you want to come out of this world you feel like you want to jump out of your skin because you, you're confused. You can't place a fi your figure on anything. You can't start anything and succeed. How I pray that you will not feel like this and put your life in order by the grace of God. You also feel loss of self-image. People who are confused, people who are in confusion, they feel like they do not have self-image. They, they lose their self-esteem. They lose uh, you know, their self-worth. When you stand before people and you're given an opportunity to present something, you don't feel like you're worth, to do, you're worth doing it or you're worth even the pay that you're getting. You don't feel like you're worth uh, you know, what people call you. We may call you honorable. We may call you your, His Excellency. We may, his Excellency, we may call you a prophet. We may call you, we may give you a huge title. But if you are in a state of confusion, you feel like that title is not worth it or you're not worth it. A confused mind leads to low self-esteem. A confused life, life uh, uh, mind leads to so low self-esteem, like I've said. Uh, you feel like a loser in life. You feel like a loser in life. When you are confused, even what you have achieved, sometimes you feel like you're a loser. And that is just a state of confusion. Remember, I'm saying it's a mental condition. You can come out of it. You can come out of it. And today we are coming out of it together. In, it starts by being stressed and may lead to depression. Confusion may start by, uh, starts by being stressed up and it may lead to depression. It shall not get there in Jesus' name. So before it gets there, kindly put your house, your mind in order and get yourself orderly and not messed up. A confused mind feels as if your mind is full. Have you, have, you, have you ever come to a state where you feel your mind is so full, but you don't know where it's, what is filling your mind? It's confusion. If you organize, just like a, a desk, when you scatter stuff on your desk, you, it looks like it's so full. It looks like you have so much work. Just put the documents together. This document belongs here. It's a finance document. That document is a, uh, is a human resource document. This document belongs here. This document is for this. You have an in-tray, out-tray. The moment you organize that desk, work becomes so easy and you realize this is work I can do in one hour or two hours. And, but if it's messy, if it's scattered all over, it, can, it actually feels like you need to take a whole day or two days to complete that 
that task. So put your house, your mind in order and you'll actually release space in your mind to, to receive more information. You release in, uh, you know, space in your mind to receive more information. You often feel exhausted and loss of energy, like I said in the beginning. When, you are in, when you're confused, you feel exhausted and loss of energy. When you feel that way, you cannot you know, read or even listen to a teacher or listen to a teaching because a confusion fills your mind and then you feel exhausted. You feel uh, tired. You don't feel like waking up from the bed. You're seated in, the, in, your, in your office. You Sometimes you even get late. Uh, not doing anything, but seated, leaning back on your on your seat, uh, thinking over things that you do not have control over. Do not allow that stage to take on, to take over or to take a toll of, over you. This, the other thing you need to look at is what is the solution to confusion as a believer. What is the solution to confusion as a believer? How do we come out of this state? How do we come out of this confusion? I know. Uh, you are waiting for this and I pray that as we go through this, you come out victoriously. Number one is you need to deal with mental paleness and deficiency. You need to deal with mental paleness and deficiency. Dealing with the paleness of the, or deficiency in your mind requires study, requires study. Read the Bible, read important books, biographies, anything that you can read that will help you understand your direction, then you need to read it. Because reading, reading the, uh, clears the paleness, clears the paleness. Reading is like painting a wall. If a wall does not have color or it's pale, all you need is take a brush, take a paint, uh, take a paint and paint the wall black or red or white or blue. The moment you paint it, you start giving it shape. You give it, you know, an image. The same thing with your mind. When you read, you, you clear the paleness in your mind. And not only that, the deficiency in your mind is cleared by reading. Reading brings efficiency. Reading brings efficiency. All you need to do is read, read, and read. Are you in a particular direction in life? Are you in a particular career or industry? Look for books that are that talk about what you're, you're, you're doing. Uh, read books, read biographies of people that have been in the same line that you're in. And that could clear your confusion. It could clear your doubt. All you need is to read something that will give you answers to your questions in mind right now. Mental paleness is ignorance in simple terms. Mental paleness is ignorance in simple terms. The antidote to ignorance is reading, nothing else. Study of the word of the was the study of the word of God purifies your mind. Every time you study the word of God, it's a purifier. It's a purifier. And and encourage you, don't just read books, don't read just read books written by people. Read the word of God. Study the word of God. Study the word of God. The, the more you study the word of God, the more it clears doubt. The Bible says in John 17, 17, uh, uh, the Bible says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. The sanctifier here, the sanitizer here, let me use the, 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 the new term now. The sanitizer here is the word of God. The sanitizer for your mind. The sanitizer, the sanctifier for your mind is the word of God. When you read the word of God, it sanctifies you. It, it cleanses the confusion. It clears away that clutter in your mind and it gives you direction. The word of God is a purifier. The book of John 15, 3, the Bible says, You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Every rema, every word spoken to your life, that word cleanses you or cleans you. It, it makes you clean. It cleans your mind. Remember, I said in the other in the in the other part that the mind is a is a con is a, the coordinate of the the body and the spirit. And for you to operate properly or to operate properly in life, you need to have a clear mind, a clean mind. And the only thing that I know that cleans the mind is the word of God. 
every time you read the word of God, you get a rema, you hear a man of God speak to your life, what it does is it cleanses your mind, it purifies it, and it ends up cleaning your heart. The word of God gives you direction in the midst of confusion. Now you get a rema for this season in Jesus' name. The other thing you need to do to, uh, you know, to come out of confusion is deal with mental instability. Deal with mental instability. Dealing with mental instability means practicing consistency in character and decision making. The only way you can deal with instab mental instability in life is to be consistent in the things that you do. Be consistent in the things that you do. Uh, be consistent in your character and be consistent in decision making. That means you need to be whatever you've started. If you want to clear instability, can you stick to it for some time? Develop the discipline of doing one thing consistently and your mind will shape up towards that direction. If you can train your mind to think in a particular way for some time, then you develop a habit of thinking in, the, in that direction. If you start reading the Bible today, every day for 30 minutes, by doing Bible study and develop that discipline, become consistent in it. What you're doing is you are developing mental stability. People who have mental instability are people who are not consistent in the things they do. You start prayers, you cannot go for a fasting for three days, you become inconsistent, you start Bible study, you cannot go for it for a month. You, you stop, you break it. The moment you go into the habit of breaking your, your character, your, 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 your things or activities, you develop mental instability. And a mind uh, is very, uh, it can be cultured by the way you treat it. Your mind can be cultured uh, by the way you treat it. If you treat your mind uh, into discipline of consistency, your mind will become so disciplined. Try consistency. Try starting something today do it consistently for 21 days and see what will what happen to you. You will not only be disciplined in that thing, but you'll also have trained your mind to be stable. That is very critical. And especially for believers, mental, mental stability is very crucial. For every business person, you need uh, mental stability. Every, uh, in every career, for you to be successful, you need mental stability. Do not be inconsistent in things that you do. Consistency develops discipline, which is important for mental stability. Eliminating worry and doubt, which leads to fear and mental stability. You need to eliminate worry and doubt, which leads to mental instability. Uh, which, uh, you need to eliminate worry and doubt, which leads to fear and mental instability. Worry is very, very dangerous. When you get, when you get worried, you become inconsistent. Look at James 1.8. Is a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. In other words, when you start something and you stop it, when you when you start when you want to make a decision and you're you you you're caught in between two you know, options and you can't make a decision, then you become unstable. A stable mind makes a decisions and sticks to it. If you make a decision to stop smoking. Make a decision, stop, you know, going out with that kind of past, uh, that, uh, that friend of yours who is misleading you. Make a decision to stop uh, uh, sinning. Make a decision to stop immorality. Then stick to it because you need mental stability. If you make a decision, go back to it. Uh, make a decision to come out of something, go back to it. You are becoming a double-minded man. And in fact, the Bible says uh, at the next part that is, that man should not expect anything from God. You're not only unstable, but you cannot receive any blessing from God. You cannot receive anything from God. When you say anything, it means anything. So put your mind into order. Put your mind in order. Put your mind in a stable uh, state and come out of confusion. The other thing you need to do to come out of confusion is deal with mental chaos. Deal with mental chaos. Deal with mental chaos. Dealing with mental chaos means, but you, you can do that by reducing the number of voices that speak to you. Reduce the number of voices that speak to you. What, how many things do you listen to? Social media, news uh, on TV, reading newspapers, reading bloggers. 
you know, everything is speaking to you. You go out, your friends are telling you this, are telling you this. You ask uh, business ideas from everybody, you know, you run from here to there, health and skelter. You cannot be stable in mind. You cannot deal with confusion if you're listening to too many voices. Choose what to hear and what to ignore. You need to choose that. Uh, don't pay attention to everything people say to you or about you. You need to deal with that. Ecclesiastes 7.21 says, Do not pay attention to every word people say, or you may hear your servant cursing you. The point here is do not pay attention to every word people say. Take that to your heart and please clear confusion. The other thing you need to do, number four, is deal with distractions. Deal with distractions. Deal with distractions. Dealing with the distractions requires staying on course no matter what. Stay on course no matter what. This goes hand in hand with consistency. For you to deal with the distractions, you need to stay on course. Have you started something? Stay on course. Have you started Bible study? Stay on course. Have you started prayer uh, sessions? Stay on course. Have you started reading a book? Stay on course. Have you made a decision to leave a, a, a particular bad habit? Stay on course no matter what. Refuse to be distracted. When you start something, don't turn to the left or to the left, to the right. The Bible warns. Look here. John Joshua 1 7. It says, only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left. So that you may have success wherever you go. Success is a summation of your habit, is a summation of your habit. If you are consistent, if you are consistent and refuse to be distracted, then you are have, you have, you have assured of good success. I challenge you today, be consistent in, uh, consistent in your character. I'll, do not allow distractions. Stay there. If indeed your heart testifies that what you're doing is right, if the Spirit of God testifies, a witness, is a witness to that, to that which you're doing, that which you're doing is correct and right, then stick to it. It doesn't matter how many people are telling you to stop it. Stick to it. Do not allow distractions. So many people start very good habits of going to church, of fellowship, of Bible study, and I'm encouraging you to this, of reading, of uh, you know, uh, being good financial managers, but they get distracted uh, on the way. There will be so many distractions that you want to uh, to make you veer from the road. But I want to challenge you stick to your course, no matter what happens or no matter who talks to you out. Proverbs 4.25 says, let your eyes look directly ahead and let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you. Let your eyes look, direct, look directly ahead. Have you started something? Look directly ahead. Someone said, you know, uh, uh, we fear when we, we get our eyes off the target. And obstacles are the things we see when we get our eyes off the target or off the goal. Stick to the goal, stick to the course, and do not allow destruction. It's the best way to clear confusion. In What is focus? Focus is, the, is a very well-known terminology and impl it, impl it, 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 it implies uh, follow, following one course until success. And if you're able to do this, just follow one course until success, you're disciplining your mind, you're creating order in your mind, and you're clearing confusion in your mind. Um, I want us to go through a prayer of ending confusion. A prayer of ending confusion. You have uh, listened to this, you've heard the teaching, and you're praying to God to end confusion in your life. Say this prayer after me. My Father and my God, you are the way, truth, and life. The only true way comes from you. The life of abundance comes from you. A happy life comes from you. Fulfillment comes from you. Lord, I need you to end this confusion in my life. When I go left, I keep thinking I should have gone right. 
and when I go right, I keep thinking I should have gone left. When I'm at a crossroad and need to make a decision, I can't make a decision because a wild weed of different ideas are swirling around in my head, in my mind. Help me, Lord, end this confusion in my life. Your word says in 1 Corinthians 14.33 that God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. So confusion is not from God. Peace is from God. And the word of God says that all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ, according to Colossians 2.3. So send forth wisdom to me and confusion shall cease. Dear Lord Jesus, I submit my life to you this day so, you la so your love and peace and wisdom and truth and guidance can enter into my life. According to 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5, casting down imaginations and everything, every high thing that exalts it is self against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I cast down every spirit of confusion. In Jesus' name, we prayed. Amen and amen. If you have prayed that prayer, may God deliver you from any kind, any state of confusion. May God cleanse your mind with this word. May he purify it, sanctify it and give you direction for anything that you are looking uh, for. If you want to make a decision, may God give you clarity of the kind of decision you're going to make and not to enter into confusion in Jesus' name. God bless you. My name is Geoffrey Kilonzo, and I bring to you Believer's Economic Empowerment Program and this topic on mental capacity. We shall look at the anxious mind, the anxious mind. That will be our next topic of discussion. God bless you.